Okay, Conrad, Cynthia, uh, we're going to go over the home buying process in a nutshell. Um, it really helps to know what the process looks like and feels like. I would encourage you to get a sheet of paper uh, laid across like this and follow along if you can. Uh, you'll just retain a lot more. So on this corner you have your family. Got my wife, my dog, my baby. <laughs> and then draw a picture of a house. And draw an arc, big arc, like that. And just remember that from the first mark, which is mutual acceptance, from here to closing takes about 30 days. Could be longer, could be shorter. Takes about 30 days. Once we have mutual acceptance, the timeline starts. <coughs> so the first timeline we have is inspection. Inspection equals story. And this happens about three days between mutual and the inspection date. Um, a lot of buyers, a, a lot of buyers can get into trouble by nickel and diming the seller, uh, which means if you're going in and asking for little things like, uh, you know, doorknobs to be fixed, light bulbs to be replaced, uh, little tiny seat, uh, uh, leaks in the plumbing to be fixed, and of course you can ask for all those things to be fixed. But once you start nickel and diming somebody, psychologically it weighs on them. Before we get to mutual acceptance, we have already known that, hey, unless we find something major in the home, we're going to move forward with it. Like the Seattle home, we found wavy floors, we found a stuffy interior and a layout that just didn't make sense. So <coughs> what, what we did is here, and this is the process as you hit the stride, okay? Uh, when you hit appraisal is the next milestone. And for appraisal, you're usually in about one to two weeks. Appraisal means never overpay. All right. So what appraisal means, if we're using a purchase price of $1 million, if I offered one million, the seller accepts it, we do the inspection, we find some things, because of course you always find things in an inspection, uh, you never not find anything. <coughs> Once we hit the appraisal, and the appraisal comes out to one million dollars, we know that we're moving forward, and we're most likely going to close the deal unless something happens, which it always can. If the appraisal comes above one million, that means you guys don't have to pay the extra, you guys are keeping that equity for free. Okay, so it doesn't happen too often unless you get a big discount, but it's free money that you can take with you. Um, I had a client who made an offer on a $479,000 home. It's been on the market for a long time, maybe 90 plus days. And the appraisal uh, came out to over, actually just at 500,000. So she made $21,000 before she uh, closed on the home. If the appraisal comes lower, uh, then this price, let's say 950000 you either can make up the difference by paying cash, you can have the seller discount the 50000 or meet somewhere in the middle, and the third option is usually where most people go. Then you get to underwriting. Underwriting is what I call a three-year-old, okay? A three-year-old basically asks a lot of questions about why things are, why you bought this, where did this money come from, um, you know, uh, did you just, we, we never ever recommend buying a car or furniture within this process be, unless you talk to me or the lender first, um, because underwriting may think that as a red flag. If 
if you have a million dollars sitting in your bank account <coughs> and it hasn't been two months for it's a season in the bank account, then that could be uh, not qualified as down payment. So there's a lot of things going on, and uh, really my job and Jeff's job is to help you uh, through, through this process. <coughs> you can see that when we had mutual inspection, appraisal, and underwriting, that we're pretty much on this downhill, right? So this tick mark is title. Uh, the title search has been going on since day one, or maybe even before. Um, if there's a property that's been sitting on the market, I usually do the title search before. We never want you to inherit someone else's problems, right? If there's a loan that they forgot to pay off, if there's um, something with the city that they haven't resolved, maybe a, a, a water sewer bill that they conveniently forgot to pay, uh, we're going to research all that, and that's what title is in a nutshell. Then after that, we have document signing. Which usually happens, let's say, one to three days from closing. Okay? Now, up here, we're going to put money to close. You have the inspection. Say 500 to 600, and then closing cost, which is usually about 2%. Now, the closing cost can include the appraisal, title and escrow fees, document signing fees, lender compensation, um, a courier to run to your work to sign something in case you guys aren't able to make it to an outside signing. Uh, <coughs> all those really come into play at 2%. Could be more, could be less, but that's a really good way to uh, keep all your numbers in check. <coughs> now, you've gone from mutual, inspection, appraisal, underwriting, title, doc signing, and closing. Um, The one thing I did forget is earnest money. That is 1 to 5% of the purchase price. Earnest money is within two days. So earnest money, you're putting the 1 to 5% as good faith. It's not legally requ required. You know, it's, it's not all that. But... They want to make sure that you can walk, you, you cannot walk away with some uh, without some sort of a penalty, right? To keep everybody in check, this one to five percent will go into your your down payment. If you're doing a, a zero down option, you can get this back, but you guys are putting down a significant amount. So, mutual earnest money inspection appraisal underwriting title, document signing, and then closing. Now. There are some cases when we may have to waive one or more of these clauses, but <coughs> um, you know, we can get into that later. So this is basically the process in a nutshell. And the four parts to an offer is number one, what we call the purchase and sale. So the actual contract, right? We have the earnest money, which is right here. <coughs> we have the pre-approval. Uh, done by Jeff and his team. And number four, a seller letter. I'm sorry, let's, uh, let's do one better. <laughs> seller love letter. <coughs> um, so basically, assuming we have more than one person interested in the home, and because inventory is still low, uh, especially when prices drop, most people think, hey, I can just do whatever I want, 
and offer whatever I want and the seller has to take my offer. Well, uh, maybe, but when there's a price drop, the best agents know that we're actually uh, going after those price drops. So this turns your offer into uh, a, human, a human being. And with these four parts, you're basically looking at the entire process in a nutshell. Hope that helps, guys. Send me any questions you guys might have, and we'll, we'll go from there.